very warm welcome to WS Cube Tech. So guys, in our previous session, we have learned how to create a scatter plot in Seaborn. In our today's session, we will be starting with a new plot that is called as heat map plot. So guys, as a heat map plot, the word itself is saying it's something related to the colors. It will be there. There will be high intensity and low in intensity of colors over here that will be used to create this plot. Now, how does this plot look like? Let's have a look on that. So here I have an example of a heat map. This is how a heat map looks like. Now let's have a look on how it can be created. For creating a heat map, first of all, let's import all the libraries that we have. So we will be importing Seaborn as SNS. We will import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. We will import pandas as pd. And lastly, we will import numpy as np. In this one, because you can, as you, as you can see, as you saw in that picture, there was the squares in which there were random numbers over there or a random values over there. So what we can do is we can best use numpy over here and from numpy we will be using the random integer to plot it. So let's have a look on how it can be done. So I'll be writing a variable called as data. Data is equal to np.random.randint and a random integer would be, uh, it would be starting on the low value of 1, a high value of let's say 100 and the size over here that means the size of each rows and columns over here will be of 10 by 10. 10 comma 10 and I'll print this data so I'll write print data let's have a look on how this data looks like so we haven't written size is equal so it's that's why it's saying the positional argument uh, error over here and as soon as we run it now we will get something like this but this is not just data what if I want to put it in a format of a heat map to put it in a format of a heat map all you need to do is write sns dot heat map not a heat man okay I have created a new superhero over here whose name is heat man and here in the data, I'll be writing data is equal to whatever our data is, our data is data only. And as soon as I run it, I'll get the output in this way that I have 0 to 9 over here. Uh, 0 to 9 in the x-axis and the y-axis and over here on the right hand side, you can see the intensity of colors. So over here, the dark colors are representing the lower in intensities, that, that means the lower numbers over here. That means suppose this range, this darker colors would somewhere between less than 10 over here. So these are less than 10 and I'm assuming the above colors uh, more than 80 like this one or the lighter shade over here are around somewhere 90 to 100. Okay. So these are, these values are represented in this way on the right hand side. We can see a color bar over here, which is showing us the value according to our colors. Okay. This is how a simple heat map is created. Now let's put some functions to it. So I'll just bring this data from here and put it over here. So what all functions that I can add over here is first of all, let's talk about CMAP. CMAP is the color map, whichever color map you want, you can add over here. For example, I want uh, spring. So as soon as I run it, I'll get output like this. Okay, it does not look actually very nice, but let's try with GN. BU. So if I run it, okay, it looks much better now. All right. Similarly, you can give a helper over here. Suppose if you want to reduce its transparency, if you want to work on its transparency, then in that case, we will be using alpha. Alpha over here would be, let's say if I want to put it partially transparent, then alpha would be 0 0.5. As soon as I run it, now you can see it is partially transparent. This is how our alpha works over here. Similarly, if you want to give edges colors over here, a line color and an edge color over here, in that case, you can write line color is equals to yellow. And as soon as I run it, I'll get output like this because right now there is no line over here, but to give it a line, that means we give, we need to give it a width over here. The line is there, but the width is not here. So for that, I'll be giving so line width is equals to, let's keep it two and let's see what output we'll get. So yeah. I guess now the lines are visible to you. So in the line width we have, so in the line width we have mentioned two, and in the line color we have mentioned that we need a line colors of yellow in between. So this is how a heat map could be created. Now suppose, so suppose on the right hand side you can see there is this color bar. If you want to remove this, if you wish to remove this, there is a method for that as well. Also, what we'll be doing, I will also show you if you want to. Um, see the numbers over here right now. All we can see is the dark colors and the light colors. If you want to see the values over here. For that, what we can do, we can just write comma not. not means annotations is equal. So it takes the value in Boolean. That means we will be writing true over here. As soon as I run it, you can now see the values which is written on each of them. And as I said that the darker shades are between 1 to 10 and the lighter shades over here are between 90 to 100. So you can see over here, this is how it's happening. So we can view the value by just writing annotation is equals to true. Similarly, as I was talking about this color bar over here, if you want to remove this color bar, all you need to do is write the same data. After this, put cmap 
not the C map but the color bars. So C bar is equals to we will be writing false that this. Uh, so again C bar takes a value in boolean and if I run it, I'll get the output in this way. Now you can see from the map we have removed the color bar and it's just the map over here. Lastly, we'll be talking about the tick labels. You can see the tick labels are there: zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and over here on the y-axis as well. If you want to remove these tick labels, in that case, what you can write, you can write x tick labels. It's not talk labels, but the tick labels. So x tick x tick labels is equals to. I'll be writing false. And similarly, y tick labels is equals to false again. That means we want to disable it. So again, if I run it, I'll get the output in this way. That in from uh, if you compare the previous one and this one, you will see that here we have tick labels on both the x's, and over here we have no tick label at all. So these are some important functions of heat map plot. I hope the heat map plot is clear to you. In first, what we have done, we have created a rows and columns, ten rows, ten columns of a random number between one to hundred, and then we have plotted that inside a heat map. To plot that inside the heat map, we have a very simple method. We have written s n s dot heat map, and in that we have provided with the data. After that, we learned about the c map. C map is the color mapping over here. That means if you want to change the colors here. Then you can use the cmap function and provide with the different colors that our cborn library has. After that, we have alpha is equals to zero point five, which is denoting that we, if you want to make it transparent and solid, the range over here in alpha goes from zero to one. Next over here is the line color and the line width. So if you give a line color and don't give a line width at the same time, then it won't work because you need to give it a line width. The default line width is zero. So over here, if you will give a line width, then then definitely your line color would be visible. Next, we had annotations. Suppose if you want to view the values on the heat map, in that case, you write a not is equal to true, which will give you the annotations. That means the values on the heat map. Next, we have color bar. That means if you want to remove the color bar, so here we have used C map to give the color. At the same time, C bar will be used as a true and false value. That means when C bar, you can give the boolean values over here, and it and if you put it to false, it will disable your color bar. Lastly, we had x tick labels and the y tick labels. If you disable, or if you want to disable the tick labels on both the x's, in that case, you need to write false. If uh, if you don't want to disable one side of it, then you don't need to write it. If you want to dis, if you don't want to disable it. Next, we had tick labels. So tick labels works in this way. So if you write, they take the values in boolean. So if you write false over here, the tick labels will be disabled, and the true is default. That means they will be visible. So I hope, guys, that the heat map over here is clear to you. In our next session, we will be talking about the count plot. So stay connected, guys, and I'll see you in the next session. Thank you.